Coming up on this episode of the Arnold Clark Car Show, power handling and seat of the pants excitement, we run the rule over three of the hottest hot hatches on the market to help find which raises your temperature. We'll be casting our eyes over the newest take on a hot hatch legend in the Renault Megane RS, the surprisingly sizzling Hyundai i30N and the monstrous speed and power of the BMW M140i. Plus, we'll have a few top tips on how to get the best out of your hot hatch and how to keep those admiring looks coming your way. For any hot hatch to be crowned king of its class, it needs to excel in a number of areas. Ride quality, a practical and comfortable interior, running costs. But most of all, it needs that mix of handling prowess and power delivery that really gets the pulse racing. So to find out just why hot hatches command such a dedicated and loyal following, we paid a visit to a special track day at one of the UK's premier racing circuits and home to Scotland's National Motorsport Centre at Knock Hill. So it's good fun because you don't have to have a really fast car to go fast, you just have to enjoy yourself and do what you need to do. Uh, one of the modifications I did to my car, I upgraded the wheels, um, got these wheels online, super lightweight, probably the, one of the lightest 17 inch wheels I could find for the car. Uh, it's two Forge ZF1. Um, I'm really happy with the wheels and they've added a lot of performance to the car. The custom machining uh, on the offset, the PCD means they are can be adjusted for more width, for more front end grip, or maybe you need to settle the car under braking. It helps to be able to add this dimension to something that some people overlook. They're great. Uh, so, uh, this is our first uh, race track that we've done. So we got one of the cars and basically we're just taking it out um, in the same session, just racing about, see if we can get fast lap time out of them. Well, it's just the experience of pushing the car as fast as it can go. Obviously staying away from the road and being in a safe environment, sort of testing the cars out. So we only got the car recently. My name's Rory Butcher and I am an instructor here at Knockhill Racing Circuit and today I'm driving one of our Honda Civic Type R's. Now these cars are our car of choice for teaching our pupils how to get the most out of Knockhill Racing Circuit before they drive one of our um, single seaters or a legend race car or a supercar. Honda have done a really good job of making this car track focused as well as being good on the, on the main road. So we've got a two litre turbocharged engine which uh, allows us to kind of power up the straight and, and get some high speed. And then the handling, it's just, it's quite a stiff platform so you can really lean on the car in the, in the corners. One of the most important corners on the track, it leads us down to the hairpin. So there's a long stretch after this bend, you've got to get on the power early get the exit speed right and try and be the quickest down the stretch to the hairpin. So that's why we choose the Honda as, a, as our car, it uh, does everything we ask of it. And the great thing about the, the Honda Civic Type R that we use here at Knock Hill is it's, it's just a standard road car, so brakes, suspension, engine, gearbox, it just how, how it comes out the factory and, and that just allows our customers to you know feel in, in their comfort zone when they go on track and um, yeah, they can get the best out of themselves and, and build confidence really quickly. And uh, before you know it, yeah, they're getting the revs up higher, they're meeting higher, higher speeds and, and being able to lean on the car a bit more through the corners at quite a quick rate, so. Well, today we've swapped Knock Hill for another circuit north of the border, this time the Cames Motorsport Circuit and home to the East Ayrshire Car Club. And that's because we're going to be putting to the test three of what we think are the most attractive hot hatches on the market. And where better to start than with traditionally the most driver-friendly hot hatch of them all, and with a manufacturer that in 2018 celebrated its 120th birthday. This is the Renault Megane RS. Since they began all the way back in 1898, Renault have established themselves as creators, innovators and big-name players right across the automotive landscape. 
and with the creation of the Renault Sport range in the mid-70s, a long and proud racing heritage was born. No surprise then that Renault has been at the forefront of hot hatch creation from the get-go. Indeed, for the first part of the decade from 2010, the Renault Megane RS had a just claim to being the hottest hatch of them all. But then along came the latest version of the Honda Civic Type R and everything else seemed, well, a little lukewarm. But now, in the newest incarnation of the Megane RS, Renault might just have done something to reclaim their throne at the top of the hot hatch kingdom. So Alex, you spend your days trying to persuade potential buyers that this is the car for them. What has the Renault Megane RS got that sets it apart from the rest of the hot hatches? Um, so unlike other cars in the class, uh, this has kind of got the, the reputation and history behind it of an RS driving style. It's unrivaled in my opinion. Now for all its other qualities, which we'll come on to in a minute, it is a great looking hot hatch. What tweaks have Renault made to it? So it's a complete um, facelift from the last model. Um, so you've got a wider front, a wider rear. It's got an F1 blade-like grille um, across it and they've got new lights as well and stuff like that. So it's a complete facelift. Now one of the major challenges for the hot hatch is to strike that balance between everyday comfort but then still keeping that thrill of the hot hatch uh, racy feeling. How have they managed to do that with this car? So the car itself comes with, um, you can get like the Alcantara steering row and seats, um, which again are optional extra but make the car feel really high mm -hmm. quality and expensive. Um, it gives you that sense of comfort. As well as that, you've got like the carbon fibre um, side panels and the doors, um, and as well as that, you've also got sat nav and Bluetooth for your phone and whatnot, so you still get the standard specs you'd expect to have on a high end car. Now, in terms of drivability and performance, this is quite special, isn't it? Yep, yeah, so it's got a thing called four control, which is basically where all four wheels turn. So at lower speeds, um, when you turn left, say, the rear alloys will turn right, and then again, vice versa, when you turn right, it will go left. Um, so it's a bit easier around the corners and whatnot. Well, I guess the only way to test out this hot hatch is to put it through its paces around the, around the track. Absolutely, yeah. So the performance and handling are really important yeah. in a car like this. Um, what are we in at the moment? Because there's several different modes, aren't there? Yeah, so at the moment we're in comfort mode. Uh -huh. um, which basically is the kind of softest suspension. Uh -huh. um, and it's kind of smoothest mode, so the steering's really light, so it's easier to drive. Right, we're hitting a straight, hit, put us into race mode. Yeah, stick it in pace. There we go. Oh, that feels amazing. Makes it a lot noisier, and it pops it a bit more as well. So tell us about the stats with this car, because that's the all important figures. Yeah, so the car is, does not to 60 in 5.9 seconds, it's got a top speed of 158 miles an hour. Uh -huh. um, and as well as that, it's got 319 miles of torque, which means it picks up pace really well through the gears. Uh -huh. um, and as well as that, it's got 276 horsepower, which is you know, 280 horsepower in the car. So for an S-car, it weighs 1.4 tonnes, it goes, it goes, it goes like, like nothing. When you put all those stats together, it's an awful lot of fun. It is, yeah. So there you have it. The Renault Megane RS combines the perfect mix of style and performance, comfort and ferocity, and provides plenty of smiles to the gallon. And with four-wheel steering, it now has a feature you'd expect to find in a high-end luxurious sports car, but all for just around the 30k mark. What's not to love? One of the great joys of buying a new car is having a perfect car leaving the showroom in perfect condition. But that honeymoon period can be short-lived. What can you do to help maintain that new showroom condition? I'm James Smy from Superguard and I'm here to give you some top tips on how to achieve that. When you purchase your new car, the most important part you want to look after is the paintwork of the car itself. Most people will pop down to their local motor factor and buy a polish or a wax. Now when you go to apply these onto the surface of the paintwork, they last up to 12 weeks on the surface. So a polymer seal would be a product that would be professionally applied to the paintwork of your car and means you don't have to wax or polish it for the lifetime of ownership of the vehicle itself. When it comes to the application of a polymer sealant, what actually happens here is we apply a polymer sealant across the surface of the lacquer of your paint. And once that lands onto the lacquer of the paint, it fuses together with a elastomeric polymer and seals in the paintwork, leaving a showroom finish for the lifetime of ownership of your car. So 
So it's not just all about the exterior of the car. It's very important that we look after the interior of the car as well. Now, in this particular model here today, we're talking about a type of fabric protection that could be applied professionally to all the carpet areas and the seat areas of the cars itself. And what actually happens here in this small example we have here in front of us, we have professionally applied a fluorocarbon technology onto the, the fibres of this type of material itself. And if you look just quickly, you'll see exactly what happens here. The water actually just sits on top of the surface of the material itself and it just beads off and rolls off leaving no permanent staining whatsoever on top of the carpet area or the fabric area of the car itself. So what does this actually mean today? This is a lifestyle choice. So if you want to spend all your weekends with your family and friends rather than waxing and polishing your car, then choose a paint and fabric protection for your vehicle. Still to come on the Arnold Clark Car Show. You might not associate Hyundai with making racy hot hatches, but prepare for the i30N to change your mind. At the best part of 10 grand more expensive, the BMW M140i isn't for the cash-strapped or faint-hearted, but what do you get for that money? Power, speed and plenty of it. Plus, we'll be looking into the pros and cons of low-profile tyres and we'll even have something a little bit special in a limited edition hot hatch that could just set you apart from the crowd. Stay tuned to find out more. When it comes to hot hatches, there are certain brands that immediately spring to mind. The Honda Civic Type R, Volkswagen and Peugeot GTIs, and of course, Renault Sport like the Megane RS that we saw earlier in the show, all with a certain kudos and charisma. But the hot hatch landscape is now getting more competitive than ever before, with less traditional manufacturers like Hyundai getting in on the act with this, the i30N. So David, this doesn't look like the traditional i30, does it? No, no, the style and details are quite a bit different. You've got obviously bigger alloys, these are 19 inch with the, mm -hmm. the N, again the style and details along the bottom. But not quite as aggressive looking as the Honda Type R? No, not quite as angular, it's, it's a bit more subtle, uh, the lines are a bit, a bit more curvier than that. Where does the i30N stand out from the pack? I think it's with the different driving modes with the car, so if you want to drive it every day today, that's absolutely perfect. You can also take it in the track and use it that way as well. It's quite a few thousand pounds cheaper than the other kind of hot hatch competitors as well. Uh, and you get a warranty? You get a five year unlimited mileage warranty with it. Oh, that's really impressive. So tell us about the performance then. Well, it's maybe not the fastest or the, the most stylish, but it's definitely the most fun to drive in my opinion. Well, let's take it out on the track. Okay. So talk us through the different driving modes that we've got available then. Yeah, so you'll see on the, the left hand side of the steering wheel you get three different drive modes with the button there. So Oh, the paddle, yeah. Yeah, so you've got the normal, you've got sport and then you've also got an eco mode as well. In terms of the important stuff like the stats, what does the i30N have to offer? Yeah, so you're uh, not 60 times, 6.1 seconds. Your top speed is 155 miles an hour and you get 275 horsepower with the performance model that we're in at the moment. Now, Hyundai haven't gone crazy with the interior and the dashboard, but they have offered a few nice touches, haven't they? They have, absolutely, yeah. You've got your electric seats with the, the memory function, which is always handy if more than one driver's in the car. Uh, you've got a wireless charging pad as well, which is that all built is in. That is something that's so incredibly obvious that other cars don't have yet. That's it, yeah. It's, it's not common in a lot of manufacturers, but thankfully Hyundai have included it in the end model. And the heated steering wheel as well, a nice touch, especially when we're in East Ayrshire and it is absolutely freezing. It's, uh, it's about three degrees at the moment, actually. It's, it's not terribly warm. And we'll come back to something that we did mention earlier, but it's important because in terms of price and value for money, that's something that really makes it stand out, isn't it? Absolutely, the car starts at 25,000 pounds, so it's a lot cheaper than uh, the, the hot hatch competitors that it's gone up against. Plus you get the five year unlimited mileage warranty with it as well. It's a really fun car to drive. We're just in normal mode at the moment and it is still hugging the corners really well into our final stretch hit that end mode 
might not look like the sportiest of models from the outside when you compare it to the Megan RS especially but I do think it makes you smile you can't help it yeah it's just it's great fun to drive and with that exhaust sound as well you can't you can't help but smile can you What Hyundai have managed with the i30N is something pretty impressive. To create a hot hatch at the first time of asking that goes head to head with the leaders in a class is truly a world class feat. Watch out Honda, Renault and the rest of you, there's a new kid in town. If you own a hot hatch or are thinking about buying one or even have family and friends that have one, then there's a good chance that you've come across the term low profile tyres. So what are low profile tyres, why buy them and what do they have to offer? So here we have a low profile tyre and this particular tyre is a 245 40 by 18 and it represents the section width of the tyre in millimetres, 245 millimetres, with the sidewall height expressed in the percentage, in this case 40% of the section width of the tyre and with an 18 inch rim uh, measurement. So practically what does this do for you? Well by selecting a lo uh, low profile tyre that has the wider contact footprint it's a trade-off against the fuel efficiency on the standard tyre that may have a narrower tread. The detail in the tyre tread of the low profile tyre will, will enhance the performance in wet conditions, it has more features. So this will give more grip than that of a standard tyre. And this is also reflected in the label grading carried on, to, on the tyre. So by selecting low profile tyres, we'll give the opportunity to select a more stylish rim to give you a more pleasing aspect uh, to your vehicle and also enhance the performance capability of the vehicle. But there's always a trade-off by having a more stylish wheel and a lower uh, uh, sidewall height. The tyre runs on a lower cushion of air, so it is more susceptible to shock and ride discomfort, which may be noticeable by yourself or certainly your passengers in the car, compared to that of a standard tyre, which has a higher sidewall height and will be able to be more effective to absorb the shocks. Another downside is, is that you've gone to the expense of selecting low profile tyres and stylish rims, but again, pothole damage or curb strike can lead to uh, costly, expensive replacements. Now, hot hatches are all about matching a level of practicality with a thrilling driving experience, injecting some racing DNA into the everyday. And our next contender does just that. But at around five to ten thousand pounds more expensive than many of its rivals, what does the BMW M140i offer for the money? Right, Jan, tell us about the engine, because this is the real heart of the beast, isn't it? It is, yes. So it's a three-litre uh, twin-turbo engine, 500 newton metres of torque, class-leading in terms of it being a three-litre, um, 340 brake horsepower and 4.60 to 62. So this really is where the power and the fun comes from in the car. And slightly different from the others we've seen um, in the fact that it's heavier, so it needs that three-litre engine. Yes, yeah, so, it? so the, the, about 1,500 kilos, so yes, it is a bit heavier. However, BMW and their design philosophy always make the car uh, with a 50-50 weight distribution front and rear. For example, the battery is located in the back of the car. Right. The car's slightly wider at the back. Again, all this adds to performance handling. Right, so from the engine to the brakes, tell us a bit more about the M Sports braking system. So firstly, it looks very nice, um, but there is a practical element to the car. It's about four seconds sharper in terms of brake response compared to the standard braking system. Designed by the M division, again, you can see that with the, the M logo on there. And you need that when you've got so much power. Yeah, so definitely, again, it's all again to do with performance. It's giving you that sharper braking response and improving handling and, and, and performance of the car on the road as well. Talk us through this overall M styling. This is the shadow edition we've got here. 
Yeah, that's correct. So with it being uh, the M styling, that's the dynamic look and you can see that all around the car, straight away from the front of the car, mm -hmm. very athletic, very aggressive as well, but that comes with the DNA again with a sports mm -hmm. car in there. With it being a shadow edition, the first thing you're seeing straight away is the all black kidney grills, again just adding to that aesthetic uh -huh. look of the car. You've also got smoked glass front and rear again giving it that aggressive look on the road uh, and again with the car being in performance, it's got the ferret grey wing mirror caps, again a lovely contrast against dark and light. So Jan, talk us through the interior then. It's, it feels slightly sporty, but it does have that very familiar um, one series feel to it as well. Yeah, it's very similar. I mean, essentially this car is a, is a wolf in sheep's clothing, but in terms of the layout of the car, you've got obviously the sport seats, which give you that, that bolster support and, and comfort inside the car. Um, but yeah, it isn't too far uh, away from the standard one series. I was quite surprised that this is an automatic. So you, you'd have thought that a hot hatch like this, it would all be about the driving experience and going through the manual gears. Yeah, I mean, traditionally they did have an option for a manual and automatic, but recently BMW have, have, have went solely for the automatic within the car. It's an eight-speed automatic gearbox uh, with the ability to drop up to three gears uh -huh. uh, when you press the accelerator. So you don't miss um, that, that manual gear change. If you want a more direct uh, driving experience, you can put the car into a manual drive mode. So you've got the paddles. You have got the paddle shifts, yeah. Talk us through the different modes. What are we in at the moment? So, so we're in comfort, so it's a balanced driving setting. Uh -huh. It's giving you a, a combination of the kind of eco side of the car and um, Right, well let's put it, put it into something a bit more sporty. So if you put it into sport now, you'll feel straight away um, throttle response is much more increased and you can feel that as soon as you press the accelerator. Yeah, it's fabulous, bumps, isn't it? smiles. Yeah, it's, it's definitely that a car really that... That is really good fun. I just wish we had a longer straight to Yeah, to yeah, test you're probably not on. really getting to see the true potential in the car. This, is, this isn't a car that you buy if you're concerned about um, value for money MPG wise. Yeah, certainly not. I mean, you probably get book figures of about 38 MPG, however, and in the real world it's probably closer <laughs> to 30. Yeah. So, what do you get for the extra money? Well, first and foremost, you get a BMW. This is a premium car but make no mistake about it this is a small car that packs a big big punch if it's speed and power that you're after then look no further so this episode we've taken a look at three of what we think are the most attractive hot hatch options on the market but if none of those are right for you, remember it's always worth contacting your local Arnold Clark branch or heading to the website, as there can often be some extra special and slightly unusual limited editions on offer. Like this, a Toyota Yaris hot hatch. That's right, a Yaris hot hatch. Forget everything you think you know about a Yaris, because this is something very different. Created by the Toyota in-house division Gazoo Racing, which makes the Yaris World Championship rally winning car, this little box of tricks will cost you over £26,000. But for that you get a 1.8 litre four-cylinder supercharged engine capable of 209 brake horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 62 in 6.3 seconds and a top speed of 143 miles an hour. Only 400 of these have been made by Toyota in Europe, with only 100 making it into the UK. Something a little bit unusual and special that will make you stand out from the hot hatch crowd. But best of all, it's simply a lot of fun to drive. Well, that's all for this episode of the Arnold Clark Car Show. Join us next time when we'll be swapping the hot hatches for family SUVs and hopefully helping you find the right car to fit all the family. But for now, from all of us here at Kames Motorsports Circuit in East Ayrshire, bye and happy motoring. Bye.